Howdy folks, little John. Uh, playing around the steel rig today. Um, what I'm doing today, I'm not actually going to focus on what it is that we're running through the steel, but more the process of getting it through the steel. Um, so what I'll be doing is more focusing on the power control with the voltage control um, and the temperature column temperature the temperature in the pot column um, during that process and also the heat coming through from the boiler um, and looking at the output that's producing uh, I've seen a lot of people asking questions online and stuff about um, voltage controllers and keeping um, the boiler under control um, and I mean, I've done in other videos I've touched on about using the voltage controller today. We'll have a really close look at the actual use of it. So just a quick run. I'm running uh, an all grain bourbon uh, corn mash. Uh, this one I did. I did do. I did a video on the day. I haven't actually edited and put it up. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, the day got a bit messy in the end, but. So I've got 22 litres of wash from that. Now it's running at, calculated about 6.5% alcohol. Um, I didn't use any enzymes in the wash, so I didn't get a really massive amount of alcohol out of it. But what I've got here, I've got sort of a couple of hearts and not hearts, heads and tails from last batch so I'll pop them in as well so I'm going to run this through straight as a straight spirit run so this will go straight into my barrel so this is I said some heads and tails both running in the highest 70% alcohol so let's knock up a bit and it's a jar of paint this is also from an all grain whiskey, so just sitting around doing nothing. So let's get it in there just to boost our output a little bit. So transferred the wash into the Robo Brew. This is him there. Yeah, this one's from uh, I got from Kegland. It cost about I think it was about forty dollars by memory. It's pretty simple. Uh, so my power for my boiler coming from there. Hook up power to the controller. And from there, we just turn that on. Now that's currently at 100 percent That's all good. Now there is maybe a little voltage read out there. Uh, the LED on this fella has stopped. Okay. So initially, I obviously just want to bring this up to temp. So set me boiler on to full power. Both elements, 100% on the controller, and we'll let that come up the temp. So while it's coming up the temp, I'll get my column out, and put it on, get myself set up and ready to go. Righty, yeah. So coming up, coming up the temp. Uh, the column on. Uh, just next to the hoses. They're currently at 60 degrees. Now, the hoses aren't running at the moment, I've just got them connected so they're ready to go. Um, no need to run water through at the moment, we're not, we're, we haven't got any vapour. Once we've got vapour we need to worry about water, we'll be, you know, sort of cooling. Um, so I only switch the water on in the low 70s, um, so it does, does come up pretty quickly from there. Uh, 
to that point you start finding you, yeah, start doing like a little bit of um, your first bits of four shots. So while I'm waiting for the temp, I'm just playing around here, mixing up a couple of batches and doing a bit of filtering, uh, doing some other stuff. But um, I'm probably about you know, 15 minutes off, start to pull something out. So we'll run and come back when we're closer. Okay, you can see here, um, temperature settings, we're currently on 74 degrees, I've got the boiler set to 105, yeah, this is the Robo Brew, um, full brew the, the full brewing gear, yeah, um, we've got a Digi Brew, that's going to be fairly similar, uh, at this point I am running both controllers, um, but I will switch that back to 1900 very shortly. Um, once we get a few more degrees under this. Uh, so I sit on 105, leave the temperature there, so we're constantly running. Um, and this is where the voltage control needs to come in. If you try to run just off this temperature um, with the thermostat, it will just, it just kicks in and out, in and out, and you're constantly uh, raising and lowering your temperature in your column. So the whole point of the voltage controller is to keep the column temperature stable. Um, and we'll have a look at that once we're running. Okay, so oil has come to about 84 degrees. Um, I've turned off the 500 watt elements are only running on the 1900 still at full power now with the alcohol content your boil point is reduced so you're not boiling at 100 degrees your boil point um, it's going to be somewhere around the high 80s um, there are calculators online you can use um, I, if I think about it I can remember I'll stick a link in the description below um, where you can find one I haven't run on this one, but generally you're looking somewhere around 88, 89 degrees is your, book, is your boil point. So that's the point at which you'll start making vapour. Now, and that's where the voltage controller comes in. Now you can see we're starting to get a little bit of temperature in the cold. And that's what you're looking at at the moment. That temperature, that gauge is sitting in the actual column in the top. And the camera's not going to let me zoom out. Uh, so Oh, that's a, on the top, cooling hoses coming this way, and numbers there. And as you can see at the moment, 33 and a half degrees, and that's just going to slowly climb. Um, and once we get vapor, that will climb very quickly. Uh, it takes a little while. And that's the temperature we're really focusing on with, with the output. So it's going to keep climbing. And so what we're looking at is once we sort of get to that boil, uh, we will then start um, winding back the volume controller. Okay, we're just starting to get our very first output. Get very slow drips there. Time's uh, coming up. So at this point, you sort of just need to be a little bit um, watchful um, and get your temperatures sort of right because it will jump up reasonably quickly. I mean, once you've got this, once you've got this point done, and you've got your power pretty much settled where you want, you can really just, you know, leave this to do, do its thing, and you know, just do a um, an eyeball check on it every so often. Um, again, depending on exactly what it is you're after. But um, I said today to run, I'm, I'm doing just a straight spirit run. Um, so I'm going to be looking to pull this off. I want my column temperature to be in the uh, low to mid 80s. 
um, somewhere ideally between sort of 82 and 86 I find works works nice uh, get your get your nice clean product with good flavor so I'll be looking to keep in that in that range when we get it there um, if you're doing this it's just a straight stripping run and you're doing going to do a couple of washes into one then you want to push it up more into the 88 92 sort of range in the you know to get a quicker output um, those lower temperatures are going to get you a slower run and it will take quite a while uh, so depending on which run you're doing depends on where you want to have your temperature nice and fast for a strip and slower for your spirit Today's a spirit run, and I mean, once you've got this, once you've got this point done, and you've got your power pretty much settled where you want, you can really just, yeah, you know, leave this into one, do its thing, and you know, just do a um, an eyeball check on it every so often. Um, again, depending on exactly what it is you're after. But um, like I said today's run, I'm, I'm doing just a straight spirit run. Um, so I'm going to be looking to pull this off. I want my column temperature to be in the uh, low to mid 80s, um, somewhere ideally between sort of 82 and 86. I find works works nice. Uh, get your get your nice clean product with good flavour. So I'll be looking to keep in that in that range when we get it there. Um, if you're doing this, it's just a straight stripping run, and you're doing going to do a couple of washes into one, then you want to push it up more into the 88, 92 sort of range in the you know, so you get a quicker output. Um, those lower temperatures are going to get you a slower run, and it will take quite a while. Uh, so, depending on which run you're doing, depends on where you want to have your temperature. Nice and fast for a strip, and slower for your spirit. So as I said, today's a spirit run, and we're getting going. Okay, boilers at 88. It sounds like it's just on the edge of a boil. which you'll know pretty quickly, you'll start getting a good output fairly fast. And it's that output vapour that we need, that's really what is it we're controlling. Um, the temperature is a result of the vapour. Yeah, and this is where you can have an issue without having the voltage controller if you're not boiling liquid's going to make makes 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 steam and that's your vapor that's where your spirit is um, now the amount of steam that comes off that boil will depending on on how vigorous the boil is yes it boils only you know the temperature doesn't change on the boil but the amount of energy being put into it will affect the amount of vapor being put out um, so a, a slow gentle boil will give you less vapour than a hard rolling boil despite the fact that boil is at the same temperature. Um, and that's no different in a still and that's what it is we're controlling. We want to control the amount of vapour coming out of the liquid so therefore controlling the output of the, of the spirit coming off it. Now anyway, as that's getting close to temp the column is jumping up quite quickly. Pop that back on, you can see there. You watch it, it's just climbing into the 50s. And we're now starting to get a bit more of a drip coming out. Now, at this point, I'm just going to crank this voltage controller back to about 70%. Uh, it takes about 30 seconds to a minute. The adjustment to really take place for your element to adjust. So this needs to be a little bit ahead of it. 
to some degree. But that column temp's going to continually come up, and we really want it in the mid, yeah, you know, mid 70s for a little bit. Try and um, make sure we're getting any methanol off. There's arguments about how much methanol and what's what's there. I like to take it, try to take 150 mil, the 200 mil, um, in that mid mid to high 70 sort of range, just to be sure I'm getting rid of it. There's arguments about whether it even exists, but I'm not taking any chances. I'm not dying for the sake of saving a few dollars. And the reality is, it's only probably the only you, you, you might lose a dollar's worth of spirit at the end of the day um, that's definitely not worth um, you know, making yourself crook over so that temp's still spiking up there pretty quickly um, you can hear the noise of the boil is settled that's generally an indication that it's actually starting to boil and we're getting a quicker output into our uh, output so we'll knock this back again um, I'm going to knock it back to about 50% you can see column temps now pushing into the high 70s Let's pop that back on you can see there you do watch it it's just climbing into the 50s starting to get a bit more of a drip coming out now this point I'm just going to crank this voltage controller back to about 70% uh, it takes about 30 seconds to a minute for the adjustment to really take place for, the, for your element to adjust so you just need to be a little bit ahead of it to some degree that column temp's in it continually come up and we really want it in the mid yeah mid 70s for a little bit try and um, make sure we're getting any methanol off there's arguments about how much methanol and what's what's there I like to take it try to take 150 mil the 200 mil um, in that mid mid to high 70s on sort the of range just to be sure I'm getting rid of it, getting rid of it there's arguments about whether it even exists but I'm not taking any chances I'm not dying for the sake of saving a few dollars and the reality is it's only probably you, only, you, you, you might lose a dollar's worth of spirit at the end of the day um, that's definitely not worth um, you know, making yourself crook over so that tap's still spiking up there pretty quickly um, you can hear the noise of the boil is settled, that's generally an indication that it's actually starting to boil and we're getting a quicker output into our uh, output, so we'll knock this back again um, and we'll knock it back to about 50% you can see column temps now pushing into the high 70s We really don't want to be going too much higher than that just just at the moment. Okay, so you snuck up to the uh, snuck up to eighty. Just wind the controller back just a little bit more again, just to make sure we don't shoot that temperature too high. And as you can see, it's 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 slowed down. It's still creeping a little bit. That's fine as long as it doesn't get too much. I mean, we're still going to pull off our methanol regardless. It's got to come off before anything else does. All right, and you can see with that temperatures mostly stopped going up. And again, just got to play with this control just a little bit to get where you want to be. And we're probably running somewhere around 45% power. And the temp's just starting to drop a little bit, so I said. And that's that's it. It's taken a little while for it to catch up, so we'll just crank it back to back back to the 50 and see where it equalises that. And I think that should be pretty much a good spot for us at the moment. Okay, so 
50 there, we'll just sneak up a little bit, we'll just knock him back just a touch. Okay, so we've, we're through the heads. Uh, I've taken about 220 mil of heads off that. Uh, and temperature's been sitting in, the, in, in those low to mid 80s. It's on 85.1 at the moment. It's been swinging between sort of 82 and 85 uh, fairly, fairly steadily. So that's um, bang on where I want it to be. Um, as you'd see, it's not a um, fast flow, but it's not a, not a real slow flow either. Um, as I said, uh, it normally takes me about seven hours to get through a um, through a spirit run at this pace. Um, and I will push it up a little towards the end. I'll take two jars. Um, at sort of this pace and then I'll push the third jar a little bit just to um, run it through a bit quicker and also to develop a little of extra character. Um, you know, take a bit of a... ...taster on that. That's pretty, um, mm, yeah, that's nice. That's fairly clean but still got... ...got a bit of flavour there. No, um, no real edge on that. Um, there was still a little bit of edge just towards the end of the heads, um, so it's ran through nicely. So I'd say we're probably, yeah, just sneaking into the end of, end of the uh, end of the hearts. Um, so that's running nicely. So again, we'll just let this keep running. I haven't touched that voltage controller. Since we started collecting heads, um, I said sitting comfortably in that 82 to 85 range. Now, just what you're not going to get a rock solid temperature range, like a very narrow. It's not you're not going to get a consistent steady band. Um, it will, you will stay in a fairly tight band reasonably for the most of the run, but you will get fluctuations. And of course, yeah, we're talking with you're talking electricity, um, AC power for a reason, alternating current. The current isn't steady. It will it will change depending on you have the loads around you and what other people and what other people on the line are doing. You know, you will you will drop some volts and some amperage coming out of the um out, out of your main. Uh, so you are gonna have some sort of tiny fluctuations with that. And that's where you'll see that the the temperatures will drop a little bit or they might spike a little bit. Um, but overall you you're gonna stay within that in that range where you're sort of trying to get at. So don't freak out when you see that that sort of thing's happening. And it, it's, I, it's it's going to be a normal part of the process. You're not going to you're not going to avoid that um, that having some form of um, really serious um, power power control that is going to take out those sort of fluctuations coming through your main supply. You're not going to get rid of it. So don't worry worry too much about it. As long as it's been the bulk of your time. In your, in your target range, you're good. And those little bit, those ranges going high and low will, will push you a little bit extra character, which is fine. Um, and again, that's where if you're doing a if you're doing a full run and you're just taking smaller cuts, then that's not going to be an issue because once you get in one jar, you won't get in the next. Today, on this run, I'm not worrying about taking any serious like smaller cuts. I'm happy to just take me three jars. Um, I'm not blend through that. So this is going in the barrel. It's the same, basically the same mash of used previously. So I know roughly what I'm what I'm looking at. Um, so I don't need to play around with it too much. All right. So yeah, we'll come back. Uh, we'll let it let it run a jar or two, and then uh, 
Let's see how we're looking then. Okay. We're running through nicely. Now yeah, got uh, two large jars there and a nice tick. Uh, This has been coming off sort of between 85 and 88 the last sort of jar and a half has come off a little bit as we got into the wash so um, I'm just going to push the temperature I'm just going to push the uh, power up just a little bit and See if we can get this up into the uh, around 80, 89, 90 um, and push through the end of this a little bit quicker. Uh, we're what? We're about, about two thirds of the way through the, through the run. So, um, if I can finish this jar off. Uh, probably pull off one more that size, which I'll just keep aside for faints. Um, these three jars then will pretty much um, be hearts, and I'll, um, I'll blend them up a bit. Uh, put two. Well, about two jars will go into the um, into the barrels to help the solar up. That'll get it um, not quite full. It's 3.3 litres in at the moment. I took half a litre off it just a little bit earlier. Uh, Half a bottle, well, half 500 ml, 500 ml off. Uh, cut it back to 43%, and that's in there. Uh, and a little sampler, and it was very tasty. So I'm very, I'm really happy with how that's going. So got 3.3 in the bar, in the barrel. Um, we'll put about two jars here. Should give me about 1.2 liters in there. So I won't, it'll go close to filling the barrel, but not quite. And uh, that'll leave me one jar, which I'm going to oak with. I've actually got some Jack Daniel, actual Jack Daniel barrel chunks, big chunks. chunks into a jar and they age separately. Okay, so that tent's pushed up around 90 now. It's a little bit quicker. Um, I'll leave it there. The rest of this bottle, I'll take that. Yeah, I'll take 600 off this at that pace, and then I'll um, nudge it up just a little bit further from the last jar, uh, just to finish off. And I'll, I'll come back. I'll just do a quick, a, a quick um, bit of video just to show you how much quicker it comes, how much quicker it comes off for that last little bit, which is be more like your like a stripping run. Right here, yeah. just a third bottle. 
third jar where I want it. Um, this has been sitting around 91, 92 degrees. Uh, let's Still relatively clean, there's no real prickle or anything in that, so I'm pretty happy with that. So I've got what I want. I'm just gonna nudge this up a bit. And I want to run this last jar off just a little bit quicker. So I'll probably push this up to about 94 and get a bit more of a um, quicker run out of that and fill this jar nice and quickly and you can see already that run's starting to get faster that's not quite a run that's still um, just a drip getting runs so now, so it's now start, it's pushing up towards 93 now. So this is more the speed you, get, you want to be looking at if you're running a, um, you know, when you're doing a stripping run. A little bit faster, we're not so much worried about um, keeping the flavours nice and clean. You just want to get it through quickly to get the alcohol out of it um, for a later run. I'll probably push that just a bit more. Now again, I'm still only up, still under 60% on the uh, on the power there, so it's not a lot of difference from one to another. But that's flowing a lot quicker now. Yeah, so this last jar will come off much faster. I don't know how well you can if you're picking that up, it's a bit um a bit darker at the moment. But that's pretty much a constant dribble and I'll probably can go a little bit a little bit more of that power push it there. Pretty much right up to sixty. That's a lot faster, and that jar's going to rip off in no time at all. Um, so as I said, when you're doing the stripping run and you want to get through quick, this is yeah you know, where you want to go. You push your power a little bit higher. And I'm not getting any more power at the end of it. I don't really get much more heat in the column there. It's 93 in the column. I've got 94 on the boiler, so it's pretty much pushing as far as she's going to go. So, uh, just a little bit more, just make sure we're getting everything out of it. But 93 2 on the column, 94 on the boiler. That's, that's about it. So, that's it, that's your differences. Yeah. It's not a lot of percent. So there I'm probably sitting about 62-63%. Uh, give the bulk of the run at about 50. So it's only a small amount of fluctuation from one to another to get that right temp. Um, I said if I was trying to do this with just without, the, without this controller, just running the element off the uh, straight off the boiler, yeah, temperatures be up and down all over the shop. Um, I did have a little bit of trouble um, during, I think it was the second jar, I, I, I was really having trouble keeping the power up, um, and I'm assuming that was a supply issue, because um, it was dropping it was dropping right back out to low 60s, um, and then coming back again, I've sort of done that for about an hour, which extended the day quite a bit, because what should have taken me yeah, about an hour to fill a jar probably took them more like two um, but these things will happen uh, certainly not going to affect the outcome it's more 
pushing higher gets you more into the dodgy zone. So I might taste that now. That's yeah. That's not as clean as just the last end of you know, that last jar, which is only you know, three degrees three degrees cooler. But that's the difference it makes. Um, so you need to play around with yourself and work out you know where your temperatures work best. But this is an absolutely vital piece of gear if you're running a pot still. Um, it's probably not so important on a reflux where water control and water flow seems to be more of um, the control point. But on the pot still, it is all about controlling the boil and the vapour. Uh, and this is to fill with other, another sense. About four, they're about 40 bucks from Kegland. Um, and I'm really happy with it. So. If you've got yourself the pot still, grab yourself one of these pills if you haven't already. Make your life a hell of a lot easier. So, anyway, that's me. I'm going to get out of here. It's getting later in, late in the afternoon. We're going to get some dinner happening. Um, let this fella finish off. So, you got any questions, stick them down the bottom. Yeah, and as always, till I see you again. Yeah, good distilling. Bottoms up.